All right, welcome back, everybody. So today you're gonna to learn how to play 8675309 Jenny by Tommy Two Tone. This is a guilty pleasure of mine. This was the first sort of guitar riff I ever learned, um, sort of pop song that I ever learned when I started playing guitar um, back in the day when it was a new song and um, always stuck with me and I gave it another listen recently and there's actually lots of little layered nuances and things going on um, with the guitars in here and so want to spend some time on that and share that with you. We'll talk about that great opening riff, what's happening on all the rhythm guitars and that great guitar lead. All right, if you haven't done so already and you enjoy this kind of thing, please jump down right now and click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. There's a couple ways. You can go right down here. You'll see thanks, which is like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Um, you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the lessons that I do here on YouTube and exclusive content for members. And there's even a fun store for 12 foot chain merchandise. All the links are in the description. Check it out. Okay, well, let's get to it. So this is definitely a Telecaster song. You can hear that tone all over the place in here. Um, we're going to start with the opening riff. Okay, so the opening riff, um, I'm going to play on the middle position in my telly and I'm going to sort of back off max volume a little bit. I have a little bit of um, overdrive going on in here, not much. I'll put all the settings for the gear that I'm using down below. And I also want to let you know I'm using my Fender Tone Master series amps. I'm, act I have, I'm running stereo out, one into a Princeton Reverb and the other side into a Deluxe Reverb. Both these Fender Tone Masters are amazing amps. Um, I've got links down there if you want to check them out and pick one up for yourself. They are fantastic. Now for the opening riff, I'm on my middle pickup position, sort of backed off on the volume a little bit. Um, now the bass sort of chords that are going on in this song for much of the song, the verses and the chorus, um, is F sharp minor, D, A, and B. And the intro riff is playing off of those shapes. Okay, so the intro riff um, is going to be played like this. So this first shape is actually part of an F sharp, F sharp minor, but you're leaving that open E string the whole time for all of the chord shapes that you're using under this uh, opening riff. So the, but the reason that that's working is because this is part of a, it's like an F sharp minor with a minor seven on it. And then you're just going to add that D note. You're going to move that finger up or move up one fret on the G string because that makes your sort of D. Right? So here's your F sharp minor. And that chord shape is over that. Next chord is a D. You're adding a D note. A is the next one, which brings you back to that original shape. And you can see that that's part of an A, like an A chord like that. And then the last chord is a B. So you're going to slide that down to your fourth fret. Right? And I think the way that they pick it on the album is moving in one direction. And then coming back on the last one. I sort of reflexively may alter that a little bit, but those are the notes. Sometimes I do the picking like this. Whoops. which is the same notes, but it's actually not actually how they do it on the record. You can sort of hear that. This is the right way. Right? So that's the riff. So you can hear that part that obviously happens in the, in the intro, and then you'll hear it sort of throughout as one of the guitars 
um, as verses build and sometimes in the chorus you can hear it or during the guitar solo one of the guitars is doing that in the background but that's you know that's working over that f sharp minor d a b wherever that that shows up that will lay over that nicely okay now there's another rhythm guitar there's actually a couple rhythm guitar tracks that are sort of laid in there but the other rhythm guitar predominantly is sounds like it's more like it's on the bridge pickup and you're sort of playing power chords and you hear sort of a vibrato on there so you're really grabbing it's and truly sort of power chords it's root fifth root you know i'm sort of muting that e string and just hitting pretty much right so that's that's sort of the approach on on that rhythm guitar part now as the verses build um there's you'll hear sort of other parts that'll sort of creep in there too so one of them during that shape another rhythm guitar part that's happening is hear that sort of creep in you know as the second half of the verses go on it is one of the guitars that's going on underneath the guitar solo but cool little thing you sort of you sort of don't notice it and then once you do notice it you can't not hear it it's it's right there but cool little part there's also kind of a cool little call and response uh part of one of the rhythm guitars that are going on there where it sounds sort of like and it's this part So again, it's sort of building off of that, uh, um, similar to the open theme, it's using the similar shapes, right? Which is a cool little lick there. Okay, and then it goes to a part where it goes to the uh, an E chord. Um, so during this E section, it's played in sort of two, uh, two ways. The first part is an E, D to A. And the second part is E, A to D. And one guitar is doing that power chord. Right. The other guitar is doing something a little more subtle and nuanced, where he's playing these muted chug, chug around that so when it goes to the first one where it's e d a he's doing basically something like this right so he's which is almost like the pretty woman riff but um but not playing the full chord and the second time around the chords are e a d he does little plays around with the note there between the a and the uh the a and the d and that works because if you think about an a chord it's playing with the major third and doing a suspension on it but and he plays it a little bit differently, subtly each time, but that's the that's the sort of approach that he's doing it. Back to your. Okay. Similarly, in the chorus, um, there's sort of two approaches going on with the guitars in the chorus. So one guy is playing. There's doing that sort of power chord thing. The other guitar is doing something where there's an A and a B um, piece to it. So the first time is similar. The second time he plays it, it's this. So there's those stabs, those punches on the F sharp and the D. And then he finishes it off. 
And that happens during the choruses. It happens during the choruses and it happens during the guitar solo, underneath the guitar solo. But that's the subtle difference between when you're playing the verse and you're playing the chorus. There's a guitar that's hitting those stabs. Every other time. So the A and the B parts go A. B. A. B. Subtle difference. All right, then the bridge part, the chord, the, you know, there's one new chord that's introduced, which is in C sharp minor. And again, one guitar is doing the. More power chord based thing. Um, and the other guitar is layering on a little bit of arpeggio and articulation to the notes. So it's. is into the intro part of the guitar solo, right? So two guitars, two different slightly approaches, um, nothing rocket science there. But again, those chords were C sharp minor, E, F sharp minor, A, B. In the intro of the guitar solo now, you know, you hear that. band breaks down a little bit. So when the guitar solo kicks in, it's all of those parts happening underneath the guitar solo. So one guitar is playing this the whole time. Another guitar is playing the doing that. And there's another guitar doing the so it's all hands on deck there. And uh, riding on top of that is this fantastic guitar solo um, in F sharp minor pentatonic. And um, let's talk about that now. All right, so slight tone change on the guitar solo. What you're hearing is the lead guitar is also being run through a some sort of rotating speaker, a Fender Vibratone or some kind of Leslie effect. Um, I'm using my um, Ventilator 2 um, Leslie pedal for this. Um, and I think it sounds to my ear like he's on the middle pickup position, possibly. Um, but this is actually a really interesting solo for me because it's, it's very instructive on the minor pentatonic rock sort of scale. And there's a bunch of ways, uh, positions on the neck that you could play this. Um, and I'm actually going to show you a couple of them. Um, but what I like to do is I like to find the hand positions where the phrasing sort of works where you're in one spot and as it as the notes climb up the neck i like to find the position again where most most of the things are happening in in one position um so the way i like to play it is sort of in two of the those minor pentatonic positions the first half is down here second half is up here so the lowest note that we're going to have on the solo is here. And the highest note we're going to have is here. Okay, so let's run through this how I like to play it. And uh, I start down here. And that's the first part. I take everything in this sort of first, what I call the first position pentatonic, right? Right? Now I could go. That all works there fine. Um, the next part is a big climb that goes all the way up. So what I like to do is divide this solo into the first part. And then I like to come up here to this next position, this, this F minor position, and finish the rest of this up here. And 
And I think that's instructive because we're actually switching boxes or positions. And as I was learning guitar, it made more sense to me to say, oh, here's an F minor shape here. And oh, there's an F minor shape here. And it makes sense for me to sort of build the solo off of those familiar chord shapes, which is it worked for me. So one time at speed. Right? You could also have that second half up here. Um, which might be even easier. You know, that's the same position as this. It's just the octave up here. But I like doing this because it puts my fingers in different places and it's learning more than one sort of scale shape. You could also do the whole thing sort of based on that first position and then do the whole climb at the end. But it just seems like a lot of movement to do that. But, you know, it all works, right? It's just different sonically depending on what thickness of string you're you're doing based on the position that you're at, right? And coming out of that solo, it goes right into the E, you know, EDA part. And there's a little bit of lead there that happens all the way up here. So you're grabbing it all the way up at the, what is that, 22nd fret, I guess, the D, and you're gonna bend it up to an E. And then end with this. And that's it. All right, and that's 8675309 Jenny by Tommy Two Tone. Thanks for indulging me on that one. I think it's a cool tune, you know? So, hope you learned something out of that. And, um, if you like this kind of thing um, and you haven't done so already, it helps me out if you go down and click subscribe and ring the bell because the bell will let you know when I'm dropping new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this and if there's another song you want me to take on and do a similar lesson. And until next week, take care, everybody.